Okay, I took out these gas tanks. And what these guys done, they, they wanted to have gravity feed. So they put this tank in on the driver's side and this one on the, or on the passenger side, this one on the driver's side. Then they cut a hole in front of the rad and screwed a nipple in. Then they had a hose going across the rad here to hook those two tanks together. Okay. Now I'll show you here. And uh, are you still videoing? Oh, yeah. And anyway, there's no shutoff valve, eh? See the tank went in here? Yeah. Then they screwed the nipple on here, on this side. Yep. Put that tank in, put a nipple here, and then put a chunk of uh, farm gas, a rubber gas line hose in. Okay. So if something went haywire, there's 30 gallons of gas to run in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that wasn't too bad. But no valve to shut anything off. And meanwhile, if uh, over here... This setup is running the hydraulic pump for the for the auger. Okay. So say a belt went, eh? Yeah. You'd have to get a hold of a Newfoundland credit card, stick it in here, and siphon the gas out on both sides yeah. before you could unhook it. Then you gotta take the hose off and the nipples off and take the tank out to uh Fix that. So can you imagine being eight or ten miles out on the lake and go through this? You'd want to insure it as hard as you can and throw a red rooster in there. So uh, for maybe some of our international viewership, what's a uh, Newfoundland credit card? It's a siphon hose. Everybody in Newfoundland had one. They're about 20 feet long. You stick it into your friend's tank when he's not home, you suck on it, and let it run into a pail until you got five gallons of gas. You put it in your own vehicle and you drive away. Okay. And that's uh, 12.9 APR, I guess. And then uh, this hose here is a return line to the tank. And this one here is the, the suction line. Uh, this one goes to the carburetor. This one goes to uh, the return line. So anyway, uh, to block this off, you can't put two tanks in and then have the return line running to this one. Because unless you got it valved off, uh, you're going to have more flow out of these two than uh, one tank can take away. So it would be running over. So we got that figured out now. So when you put in the new tanks, what have you got to do? Your I'm going to put the new tanks in. Hose is, the line is going to go up here from that tank to this tank with a valve on it. Yeah. Uh, so that you can shut this one off. And draw out of that tank for now, and then when this one's empty, you draw out of the other one. That's the plan, or else we draw out of both of them at the same time. I had to move the fuel pump up to here because it was down here, and you got to take the fuel pump off to get the tank out. So I don't know if that fuel pump is going to be too high now or if it's going to draw. We'll see. Fun times. Yeah. This is uh, in line from the tank. This is return. This goes to the carburetor. So, besides the Newfoundland credit card. And then okay. we got the floor all bolted in. The new floor. Because this was rotted right out. That was what it was. 
and uh, you got your power steering in the power steering is in and works and uh, there was no brake on this uh, this machine so I I put a new shaft in here a new chunk of pipe and mounted the brake and now I got to put the caliper and the rotor and the, and the reservoir in and that should do that but I, I want to get all this repairing done first before I, I sand and paint how much more how many more weeks do you have well, all this got to be done by the 20th of December out of here. But every time I look, there's something else. I don't know if you got pictures of this the other day, but this has got to be sanded and welded, eh? Yeah. Anyway, that's what it's all about. What do you think, Peter? Pretty good setup if you don't have any shut off valves and yeah. your tank for timings together. That's just great recipe yeah. for a nice big fire and explosion yeah. when you're out in the lake. Best thing to do is jump and run. Okay, I'm going to put the fan on. So. Dad's not just a dog whisperer today, he's the dog saver of lifer here. Went outside to call in Harley and uh, just about turned around, came back in, and I heard a howl. And I kept on hearing, hearing him howl. And I ended up trudging through the deep snow to get to the river. And by that time, I'm played out. Dogs in the river fell through. Howling, howling, howling. Because I didn't tell these guys where I was and I didn't have my phone with me. I trudged all the way back to get the safety supplies here call 911 dad in the meantime drove his car through there got down there just in the nick of time his poor old dog is just a freezing Oi, oh my he's soaking wet dad we got to rub him down more tuck him in. oh and lucky even, lucky lucky he couldn't even stand on his legs when i got him out dad had a pry bar here this oh. thing right here and managed to Pull them out. I was running down there with that and I actually turned my vehicle into the snow because I had to think for a second. I went, well, what if the RCMP comes here? He can't block the passage. In the meantime, these guys got him out. Are you stuck there now? I am, so I just stopped. Maybe you can pull me out later on. But what an afternoon. And if we hadn't if we hadn't gone out there looking for Harley when we did, dog would be dead. Throw his in in the morning. <sighs> what an afternoon. I'm pouring sweat. I'm so glad Harley's okay. Oh, poor baby. We're going to dry him off more here so we can get some towels going. Yep. So we got the dog underneath the blanket. She's... Let's see what he looks like Yeah. after he's recovered. And he's we got the... Still a little shaky, but he's getting the heat. Yeah, we've got the... Easy. Catalytic heater back there. We won't be able to leave that without starting the, the shop on fire. So we're going to stay here for at least a half an hour yet to make sure the dog's okay. 15 minutes or so. Yeah. So, oh, lucky, lucky, lucky.